What's going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wraparound, where we're going to be breaking down the NHL action going down on Thursday, November 9th, 2023. Before we get into it, though, if you like this content, make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily $19 best bet and my NHL breakaway, make sure you head to PickDogs.com and click the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. I also have something new and exciting coming up here at Pick Dogs. If you are a big better looking to hit the books hard on the ice, you're going to want to check out my all-access power play pass. And I will be honest, the service not for everybody. These are for the betters that are dropping $1,000 or more per game on the NHL and for people that want that elevated top-tier advantage to get a man up on your book. Now, this package for the first time will feature the rating of my plays as well as late info plays that I make throughout the day based on goalie news, goalie announcements, injuries, Etc. Now, if it's not your cup of tea, again, that is totally 100% fine. We will still be cooking up premium winners daily at Pick Dogs Premium. Still be covering every day. It's gonna be every game every day right here on the wraparound. But if you want more information, text 775-636-7674, and we will get you hooked up. Anyways, NHL action Thursday. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. First, we head to the Little Caesars Arena, where the Detroit Red Wings take on the Montreal Canadiens. And, uh, you know, the Detroit Red Wings haven't been playing their best hockey, but you know, they're still 5-4-1 and one in their last 10 games. They've alternated wins and losses in each of their last five, but they've at least been scoring some goals. They handed the Boston Bruins their first regulation loss. Meanwhile, Montreal loses a four in a row, and they're just getting, you know, beat up left and right. They got beat up by Tampa Bay, beat up by St. Louis. They only scored two goals against uh, Arizona and Vegas, so... I just don't, I can't trust this Montreal team right now. They are one and four in the last five meetings between these two teams in Detroit. I don't love this price with the Detroit Red Wings, but it's actually one of my least favorite games on the board, but I'll stick with the Detroit Red Wings at minus 178. Maybe it's a parlay piece or something. Next, we head to Madison Square Garden for a rematch between the New York Rangers and the Minnesota Wild. We just saw this matchup a few nights ago as the uh, the Minnesota Wild ended up with a 5-4 shootout win against the New York Rangers. And it was a game I remember very well. I was on the New York Rangers in that game. It was a shoot, went to the shootout, and the puck hit the post, hit Jonathan Quick's butt, and then rolled back into the net as the game-winning goal. And that goal is the only thing standing between the New York Rangers and an eight-game win streak coming into this game. The Rangers have just playing, been playing the better hockey. So if it is Jonathan Quick or Igor Shesterkin, um, I am going to go the way of the Rangers here, but I see both listed as questionable on the uh, on the injury report, so I would take that with a grain of salt and tread very lightly. So in the event that they don't go, I'm going to take the over 6.5, but if they do go, I like the Rangers on the money line in this one just because you look at the depth chart for the Rangers. It looks like it's Louis Domingue as the uh, the third string goaltender for for the Rangers. That's who I'm seeing, so that, that's, that's my take on it. Over if the, now they're Shesterkin or quick play. But if they do, I like the Rangers. I just still don't trust the Wilds goaltending in this one. Next, we head to the Canadian Tire Center, where the Ottawa Senators take on the Vancouver Canucks. And uh, the Ottawa Senators, you know, a team that I was very high on at home coming into the season, thought that's where they were going to play their better hockey. Um, you know, has, it just ha hasn't been the case for them as of late. Now, Ottawa is... You know, coming off of the win over the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are coming into this one on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And while it's not a traditional travel spot or a terrible travel spot, they are staying within the province. They're still, you know, coming on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. They are 0-4 in their last four home games. And they're going up against a Vancouver Canucks team that's playing some of the best hockey I can remember them playing in recent memory. Winners of four straight in seven of their last eight games. Head-to-head, -head, they've won 13 of the last 18 meetings between these two teams. Like I said, I just, when you're going to continue to give me the Canucks at this price, I think there's some sort of stigma still attached with the Vancouver Canucks, like they're not supposed to be this good. Yeah, I, I, I'm still going to ride with them whenever you're giving me a coin flip price in the Canucks with the way they are playing. So give me Vancouver in this one. Next, we head to the Emily Arena where the Tampa Bay Lightning hosts the Chicago Blackhawks. And, uh, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks, they've been able to pull off the, you know, the upset in the underdog role a couple of times already this season, but it doesn't change the fact that they are still, still, you know, they're one of the worst teams in the NHL. They've lost seven of their last 10 games. A lot of the recent games that they've been losing, they've been getting crushed in. On the other side, the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know, winners of five of their last nine games are coming off a 5-3 win over the Montreal Canadiens. But you look at some of the recent games for, for Tampa Bay, um, at least... Excuse me, each of the last six games have seen at least six goals. Uh, each of the last three have seen it eight or more. Um, you know, we've seen eight goals against Montreal, 11 in the OT thriller with Toronto, 10 against Ottawa, 
I think we're going to have another high scoring game here, even though I don't love this Blackhawks, you know, offense. It looks, I think it, this could be a spot where you could see Matt Tompkins for the Tampa Bay Lightning, who has been the least effective of the Tampa Bay goalies so far. It's only a matter of time before Andre Vasilevsky comes back. Um, I think the Blackhawks will pop a couple here. I definitely think the, the, the Lightning are going to do some damage on the scoreboard. It's going to be the over six and a half in this one. Next, we head to the TD Garden where the Boston Bruins take on the New York Islanders. And, uh, you know, the Boston Bruins coming into this game, you know, they had they had the uh, the narrow win over the Dallas Stars. And, um, you know, they're coming in winners of, you know, uh, for their last five, eight of their last ten, ten, one, and one on the season. Still playing some solid hockey while the New York Islanders, while well, they've lost three of four and six of their last nine. And that stout defensive style of hockey that you always hear me talk about when we talk about the New York Islanders, it's not there. I mean, it's, it's part of the reason why, the uh, the New York Islanders have given up four or more goals in three of their last, and their goaltenders have given up four or more goals in three of their last four starts. And like I said, you're just seeing the uh, the, the back end crumble for the New York Islanders, which is something this team can't have, considering you know that this team relies on that gritty defensive style to win a lot of hockey games. The Bruins are playing that same defensive minded style, but they're scoring goals and they have the better goaltending in my mind in this matchup. So I'm going to take the Bruins on the money line at minus one sixty four. Next, we head to the Nationwide Arena where the Columbus Blue Jackets take on the Dallas Stars. And the, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, you know, they, they've been up and down, but right now they're in a down spell. They've lost six of their last seven games. I will give them credit, though. They have been competitive in a lot of their recent games. A one goal loss in each of the last two to the Florida Panthers and the Washington Capitals. And they also were competitive against the Dallas Stars when these two teams met just on October 30th. A 5-3 to three win in favor of the Dallas Stars. Um, but I'm still not there with the, uh, the 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 Columbus Blue Jackets right now. Sure, they you know they did their best work at home last season, as opposed to where they really stunk it up on the road. Um, but this is still a Dallas Stars team, it's still one of the best in the NHL. They have one of the best goaltenders in the NHL, and Jake Ottinger. Um, and you know the, the Dallas Stars, they've lost back to back games, but the Vancouver Canucks are on fire right now, and the Boston Bruins. I'll tell you, a lot of better teams are going to lose to the Boston Bruins this season. I can assure you that, so I'm not holding out against them. I think in this matchup, it's just the Stars are the better team. So I'm going to take the Dallas Stars to win this one in regulation at minus 120. Next, we head to the Enterprise Center where the St. Louis Blues take on the Arizona Coyotes. And the uh, the St. Louis Blues, you know, they they used to be like last team, or excuse me, last year, they were a team that was very, very streaky. They, they would run hot and cold. And now we're starting to see that. Now we're starting to see the lose two, win two, now they just got their teeth kicked in by the Winnipeg Jets at home. And now they take on a, an Arizona Coyotes team that has been providing value for us betters all year long. They've been a lot better at home. They are just 2-3-1 and one on the road. But head-to-head, -head, uh, excuse me, Arizona has won three of the last four meetings. They won the first meeting this season by a final count of 6-2. to two. And um, I just tr I actually trust the Arizona Coyotes goaltending right now a lot more than I do... Um, St. Louis. These are two teams that are actually neck and neck in goals allowed per game. Both are allowing 2.9 goals per game, but it's the Arizona Coyotes offense that's been better. They're 14th allow, uh, putting up 3.3 goals per game while St. Louis averaging just 2.4. Um, I'm going to take a shot here on the value with the Arizona Coyotes on the road in this one. Next, we head to the Canada Life Arena where the Winnipeg Jets host the Nashville Predators. And if you followed the wraparound a couple days ago, I was heavy on the Nashville Predators. And, well, what did they do? They shafted me. They got me. They were up, I think, 2 nothing early in that game. Things were looking great in the first period. And then all of a sudden, the Calgary Flames decided to actually play some hockey for once. Scored, you know, in the second period, cut it to 2-1. Two, to one. two goals in less than two minutes made it 3-2 Calgary. And Calgary never looked back at that point. Well, needless to say, I'm off of the Nashville Predators. You burn me against the Calgary Flames. You instantly make it onto my naughty list. And, uh, you know, they're going up against the Winnipeg team. It's had their number in recent meetings. Winnipeg's also won back-to-back -back games coming into this one. They've won uh, five of the last seven meetings between these two teams. So I'm going to go with the Winnipeg Jets here, but I'm also going to take the under five and a half. A lot of the recent meetings between these two have been low scoring. These are two teams that can tend to struggle offensively, and the goaltending on both sides is Still pretty good. I mean, Connor Hellebuck, still a world-class goaltender. UC Soros is still one of the better number ones in the NHL uh, if we see them here. So give me the Jets here on the money line with the under 5.5 as well. Next, we head to the Ball Arena where the Colorado Avalanche take on the Seattle Kraken. And uh, the Colorado Avalanche, you know, they just keep finding ways to get it done when they need to. You know, they've lost 
uh, three of their last five games, but they pulled out a big 6-3 to three win over the New Jersey Devils in their last matchup, bouncing back from that beatdown loss, that team, quote, well, I should say humiliating loss, to the uh, Vegas Golden Knights, 7 to nothing. Meanwhile, the Seattle Kraken, well, this is a team that's continuing to just tread water. You know, they win two, they lose two, and um, now they're on two-game losing streak. So if you believe in that sort of momentum, that sort of pattern, yeah, that would maybe set up for them to win here, but I would say not so fast. You know, this, the uh, the Colorado Avalanche, I think, are just a far better team here, especially at home where they are 4-0 this season. The Seattle Kraken, we talk about how they were the most profitable road team in the NHL last year, but it hasn't translated to this year. 2-3-3 three, and three on the road this season. Just not what you're looking for if you're the Seattle Kraken where you did your best work on the road last season. So give me the Colorado Avalanche to win this one in regulation. Get that hefty price down to something more reasonable at minus 140. Next, we head to the Crypto.com Arena where the Los Angeles Kings take on the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Kings returning home after quite the road trip. They swept the road trip uh, with a 4-1 to win over the Vegas Golden Knights and one of the best wins of the season for the Los Angeles Kings. Now, they do go back home where they are 1-4 and this season, but I still think they just have a ton of momentum here. And the Pittsburgh Penguins, sure, they got a couple of wins themselves on this West Coast road trip so far. They beat up on the Sharks and then they shut out the Anaheim Ducks. And I'll give some credit for the Anaheim Ducks when the Ducks were on fire at that point, but it's still the Anaheim Ducks who I think just ran out of steam and ran out of puck luck in that game. Otherwise, the win over the San Jose Sharks, cool, you, you potted 10 goals. That's impressive on the surface to score 10 goals in a game, but you got to remember, still the San Jose Sharks. So I, I got to go with the Los Angeles Kings here. They have won for the last five meetings between these two. They've won each of the last four meetings in Los Angeles. And right now, I just think they're playing the better hockey, and they're actually the goaltending tandem I trust a lot more. I know I bashed them earlier this season, but got to call it how it is in the moment, and I, I see the Kings here getting it done. So give me the Kings on the money line. And our final game on Thursday's card takes us to the SAP Center where the San Jose Sharks take on the Edmonton Oilers. And, um, you know, I know I just bashed the San Jose Sharks in that last game, but... They're finally coming off of their first win. They beat the uh, the Philadelphia Flyers in game, and I was on the Flyers, and I was on the Flyers on the puck line and that thing. And I think that game says more maybe about the Flyers than it does the uh, the Sharks actually winning it because, like I said, the Flyers couldn't get anything going in that game, but can't take it away from the, the Sharks. The, the wins all count the same. They still count for two points. And now they take on an Edmonton Oilers team that's lost three straight and seven of the last eight. Some people will say, well, this makes sense to be a logical get-right spot against the worst team in the league right now, right? Not so fast. What exactly have the Oilers done besides having Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to justify laying minus 335 here? They are only one win better than the San Jose Sharks and two points better than the San Jose Sharks. I get it. You have two of the best players in the world, but you also have one of the shakiest goaltending duos when you're when they're supposed to be the best. We knew the San Jose Sharks were going to suck this season, or at least I did. The Oilers are expected to be so much more. The goaltending has been terrible. They just put a guy on waivers that they signed for five years, $25 million, $5 million a year. That's high money for a, goal, a starting goaltender in the NHL. They just put him on waivers to be sent to the minors. That's how bad it's been. So I'm not laying minus 335. I'm not laying juice on a puck line with the Oilers. I'm going to take the Sharks here at plus one and a half. I'm going to take a shot on the money line as well at plus 265. Maybe there's some residual carryover from that, uh, from that first win of the season to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Thursday, November 9th, 2023. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure you have notifications turned on to get the newest and most up-to-date content here at Pick Dogs. And a reminder, if you're looking for my best bets, check out Pick Dogs Premium. And also, if you're looking for more information on my all-access power play pass and to find out if it's right for you, make sure to text 775-636-7674. And also, make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.